What I have here is perhaps the most vicious, scary animal that anybody has ever seen. It's a golden retriever. And today we're talking about the top five reptiles that have no fur, no fuss, just love. The best dog-like reptiles. My name's Adam, this is Josie. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. I would like to formally introduce you to uh, Josephine, who is a nine week golden retriever puppy and probably the cutest thing that's ever lived. Now, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you're wondering what happened to Steve. She's happy, healthy with someone she loves. There's a little description in the description of what's going on there. But anyway, when one door closes, another one opens. And here is Josie. And today she's going to help me talk about the best pets that are scaly, but act like dogs, sort of, kind of. Because not all of us can have dogs. Some of us are allergic or live in a place where we can't have dogs. Either way, these ones... Perfect example. The reptiles won't bark like that. Either way, let's start off with... Here's how you do it. Ready? Number five. We're talking about monkey tail skinks. I feel like normally I just don't let the dogs bark, but we're doing a video about dogs, so just... Keep going now, it's fine. The reason I think monkey tail skinks are kind of like dogs is just simply because they're so excited to see you. Now, of course, no reptile's gonna love you in the same way that Josie or Flutie or Nelly loves me, okay? They love me because they want love. I am what they think about, they look at me like I'm a sunset, like they've never seen one before. Yes, I know when dogs yawn like that, they're kind of stressed and she wants to be put down, but she's just gonna jump back up. I know, I read your comments last time. But monkey tail skinks seem to love you because you are the food bringers or the water bringer or whatever. And these guys love food. Now, of course, uh, dogs are not gonna be herbivores. And if you try to make your dog a vegan, you're a terrible person and should not own pets. However, monkey tail skinks can definitely live their entire life eating just vegetation, which they do, and they're gonna be more than happy to see you for food, much like a dog would be. Part of what people love about dogs is they're interactive, they'll come towards you for food, they'll come towards you for love. The monkey tails just like to use me as a perch. They like to climb all over me. No, it's not an affection thing, it's just an enrichment thing. It's something new for them to climb on and that something new is me. Number four, the co-host of this channel most of the time, Bearded Dragons, we're talking about Diamond and his kind. Now, Diamond is an amazing Bearded Dragon. If you watch the channel, you've seen him on my shoulder a hundred times. He is, well, the reason that I mostly use him is because he just sits there like a bump on a log. So if you're in a, say, bulldogs, right? These animals that are going to, or these breeds of dogs, I should say, that are okay with lounging around most of the time. Where if you wanna get something like a Malinois or some sort of sheepdog, obviously these are not going to be the right pets for you if you want something like a bearded dragon that's just gonna sit there all day. Now obviously this is much less comfortable than having a bearded dragon on my shoulder. I don't know how much Josie weighs, but I'm gonna guess it's 15, 16 pounds. She's a big, big girl. You're so cute too, huh? And like a dog, bearded dragons love food. If I have food in the room, uh, Diamond is more than happy to come and talk to me. He's more than happy to come and look and say, hey, what are you doing? And then eat right out of my hands, just like Josie in all of her kind, because dogs are often food motivated too. Now, bearded dragons likely aren't gonna have food motivation issues. They're always gonna wanna eat for you, which I really, really like. And they're omnivores, just like dogs. Number three. We're talking about ball pythons. Now, obviously, ball pythons have several less legs than your dog friends, and they're not quite as furry, of course, either, which is a common trend. But the reason I say ball pythons is because they're chill. They're not affectionate, but you almost think they're affectionate. They almost seem like they like you. Some of my ball pythons will climb right out of the enclosure, right to me, as if they want love. What they really want is they want, well, heat, basically. They want enrichment, you're something new. Get out of the garbage. Now, of course, ball pythons are a lot easier to feed than your puppy or your dog. They're not gonna be as expensive either because, well, just like most reptiles, you don't need to go for monthly checkups or, well, monthly when they're puppies, yearly checkups when they're adults. You don't need to give them vaccinations. You don't need to do anything. You take them to a vet if they need veterinary care. And that's it. Also, they're gonna eat one rat once a week where my dogs need to eat twice a day. That is the big difference and why I think for a lot of people who are really, really busy, who don't have time to take care of a dog, reptiles are often a much better option. Because if you're traveling all the time and you live by yourself, you don't have anyone to take care of your animals, 
you can't have a dog. It's just not a thing. Where with a ball python, you can just go ahead and not t pay attention to that thing for a week. As long as it's got water and you have someone checking up to make sure that, you know, the, everything's plugged in, heat, lights, and water, you're fine, you're A-OK. -okay. Even just put a camera on it and notify someone, hey, you gotta go to the house, they tip their water over, whatever. You can't do that with a dog. You can't just leave a dog in your house alone for a week. It's not a thing. I'm not gonna lie, raising a puppy is a little tough, but you know what's not? Fitting my Ridge wallet in my pocket. Because look how thin and slender this is. This has all the cards. This is literally what I put in my pocket before I leave the house. Cash strap on the back to keep all my Canadian currency. It works for US currency also and around the world. Also, it keeps up to 12 cards. And when I put it in my pocket, it doesn't make a bulge. Not only that, I love this one. This is the leather one that's black. I love their original black. I love it comes in reds and orange. There's so many different colors. In fact, there's 30 different colors for you to choose from. Of course, it's RFID blocking also, so no one can go and just tap your pocket and get your credit card information. You are protected with Ridge. And don't get me started on how well the Ridge wallet pairs with the Ridge key case. I carry three keys with me at all times, two or three, and they fit great in this little key case that fits with the wallet in my pocket. I don't look like a janitor with these keys dangling off the back of my pants anymore. Ridge solved that with the key case. And when you get the key case and the wallet combination, you can save up to 30%. 3 million customers, over 50,000 five-star reviews. Try it out for 99 days. If you don't like it, send it back. No questions asked. When you do keep it, because you'll love it, it's a lifetime warranty. Ridge has it figured out. And if you use my link, go below, click on it, ridge.com slash WWR, you can get 10% off your order. I stand by Ridge. This is what I use my daily carry and I think you should too. Hit the link below, ridge.com slash WWR. Number two, Schneider Skinks. This might be the most dog-like little lizard that there is. When I open my Schneider Skink enclosure, they are zooming out to come see me. Now, of course, like I said before, it's not a love thing in the same way that it is when I come home and Nelly's waiting at the door. Hey, dad, can you pet me? Pet me, pet me, pet me. I need, I need love, I need love, right? They're not like that. It's more like, hey, you're fun to hang out with because it's something different. I'm a really smart lizard and I want something more than what's in my enclosure. And of course, they are going to eat similarly to a dog in comparison to say a ball python because Schneider skinks are gonna need to eat every other day every third day, where obviously dogs need to eat once a day or twice a day, depending on how you feed them. These guys are gonna be eating more frequently and they're gonna be eating an omnivorous diet as well. So they're gonna be eating things mostly like crickets and dubia roaches and worms and things like that. And given the opportunity, I'm gonna say that uh, Josie would probably eat all those things too. Not that I recommend feeding your dog an insectivorous diet. Shouldn't do that. Now. Blue Tongue Skinks were on the first list that I did way back in the day. That video did really well, and you guys got introduced to Flutie, who is my oldest, very angry, toothless Pomeranian, who I love very much. But they are pretty dog-like, if you ask me. I think these are probably the most dog-like skink, besides a Blue Tongue Skink, maybe. And Blue Tongues are a little bit bigger, so if you want something that takes up less space, is a smaller animal, then I think for sure a Schneider Skink is the best way to go. Number one, Mountain Horn Dragons. I think mountain horn dragons, they act like so many different dog breeds all in one. Now, obviously they don't have the fur. They're not gonna bite you. So I really like this because, I mean, the reason that I got a golden retriever is it's the happiest, most go-lucky dog in the entire world, right? I think if we were comparing, I mean, a Burmese Python is pretty much like a golden retriever, but they were in the first video. I think mountain horn dragons are like golden retrievers too, because they're happy, they'll move around, they'll look at you, they'll jump right on you, but they're not gonna bite you. You don't have to worry about them being cantankerous. They're gonna eat for you really, really well. And I just think that overall, they're an animal that everyone can really get along with, everyone can love, and they're not gonna give you too many issues. Plus, you can keep them a bunch together. So they're a pack animal. Well, not really, but they could be a pack animal. They can act like a pack animal. They don't need each other, like dogs do, right? I mean, dogs, can be okay without other dogs because you are their pack. But dogs are not solitary creatures. They don't wanna be alone, especially domesticated dogs. Where mountain horn dragons, they're fine alone, but they do really well in groups. Not as well as say a garter snake. Well, I mean, maybe just as well. I don't think they need each other like that, but they do really well. And I think that they're amazing too because they're arboreal in nature. They get to a substantial size, but not big enough to hurt you, not too big to manage. And if you wanted to keep, say, a smaller species like Lepidogaster together, four of them, and a 36, 36, 18, 
you can do that. And I love that. That's why I love Mountain Horn Dragons. It's just, everything is perfect. So those are my top five picks, top five picks for, uh, well, what is mostly like a dog, but sort of not like a dog because they're reptiles. But either way, let me know in the comment section below what you think would be fitting well on this list. And as always, thanks for hitting like and subscribe. You guys are freaking amazing. As always, thanks for the Patreon supporters for all you do. You guys have seen Josie before anybody else. I wanna say thanks to every one of you for everything you do. For as little as a dollar a month, you get discounts on merch. You know what extra stuff, you get one-on-ones, all that and more. And that's it. Because I do videos on Mondays and Thursdays, that means I'll see you in the next one.